we're asked to find the critical points and linearization of the given system. Here we're given x prime equals sine of pi y plus the square of x minus one and y prime equals y squared minus y. To begin, this indicates that f of x comma y is equal to sine of pi y plus the square of x minus one and g of x comma y is equal to y squared minus y. To determine the critical points, we determine the points where both f and g are both equal to zero, which means we need to solve the system the sine of pi y plus the square of x minus one equals zero and y squared minus y equals zero. Let's focus on the second equation first. Y squared minus y is equal to zero when either y is zero or y is one. So when y is equal to zero, notice the first equation becomes sine zero plus the square of x minus one equals zero, sine zero is zero, and the square of x minus one is zero when x is one. This gives us the critical point one comma zero, and now when y is one, the first equation is sine pi, which is also zero, plus the square of x minus one equals zero, and therefore the second critical point is one comma one. So we have two critical points. We have the point one comma zero and one comma one. And now we can work on determining the linearization. We first change the variables to u and v, where u is equal to x minus x sub zero, and v is equal to y minus y sub zero, where x sub zero comma y sub zero is a critical point. Beginning with the critical point one comma zero, we have u equals x minus one and v equals y. Next, we determine the Jacobian matrix by determining the partials of f with respect to x and y and the partials of g with respect to x and y. Again, f of x comma y is equal to sine of pi y plus the square of x minus one and g of x comma y is equal to y squared minus y. For the first row of the Jacobian matrix, the partial of f with respect to x is equal to two times x minus one, and the partial of f with respect to y is cosine pi y times pi, or pi cosine pi y. In the second row, we have the partial of g with respect to x, which is zero, and then we have the partial of g with respect to y, which is two y minus one. Next, we evaluate this at the critical point one comma zero, which gives us a two by two matrix with entries zero, negative pi, zero, negative one. And therefore the linearization is the derivative of the vector uv equals the two by two Jacobian matrix with entries zero negative pi, zero negative one times the vector uv. So now we know with u equal x minus one and v equal y, the linearization is u prime equals negative pi v and v prime equals negative v. E. And now we go through the same process again with the critical point one comma one. For the critical point one comma one, we now have u equals x minus one and v equals y minus one. The Jacobian matrix is the same, but now we evaluate the Jacobian matrix at the point one comma one, which gives us a two by two matrix with entries zero, negative pi, zero, one. And therefore the linearization, when u equals x minus one and v equals y minus one, is the derivative of the vector uv equals the two by two matrix with entries zero, negative pi, zero, one times the vector uv. With u equal x minus one and v equal y minus one, the linearization is u prime equals negative pi v and v prime equals v. Before we go, let's look at this graphically. On the left, we have the graph of the original vector field. Notice this does verify we do have critical points at one comma zero and one comma one. And the graph in the middle shows the linearization near the point x comma y equals one comma zero, which is the same as u comma v equals the point zero comma zero. In the last graph, we have the linearization near x comma y equals one comma one, which is the same as u comma v equals zero comma zero. Remember, when looking at the linearizations, the critical points will always appear at the origin. Analyzing the slope fields for the linearizations, notice how they are pretty good approximations near the critical points of the original vector field. I hope you found this helpful.